In this video we're going to discuss Ansible, which is now part of Red Hat. In this topology I've got the network automation container connected to an Ethernet switch, which in turn is connected to multiple iOS V layer 2 switches and I've got some Ubuntu devices connected to the access switches. I've already configured host resolution on the network automation container so the network automation container can ping the various switches. So as an example switch 1 has IP address 192.168.122.71 switch 2 is 72 Switch 3 is 73, switch 4 is 74, and switch 5 is 75. So I've already done some work on this network automation container. As an example, I've got a GNS3 hosts file already configured with two core switches and three access switches. Two core switches are switch 1 and switch 2, three access switches are switch 3, 4, and 5. And again, I can ping those switches. So, so Etsy hosts has been configured with the IP addresses of the switches. I've also got an Ansible configuration file configured using the GNS3 hosts file, which contains these devices. We're not checking for SSH keys, so we're not gonna verify keys and we set a timeout to five seconds. So let's have a look at using Ansible ad hoc commands. Now in this example, we use the Ansible command rather than the Ansible playbook command. So I'm gonna use Ansible and notice if I type that command without any arguments, I'm told that there's an error. We are missing target hosts and various switches are shown here. So as an example, we've got I, which allows us to specify an inventory file. Notice that it's picked up the GNS3 hosts file because we've got the Ansible configuration file configured in this directory. M allows us to specify a module. By default, it uses the command module. A allows us to specify module arguments. So which arguments are we going to send to the module? U allows us to specify the remote user. So which user are we going to use to connect to the remote devices? And K allows us to prompt for a password. So let's start with a basic example. I can ping switch one. So now let's use Ansible and run commands against switch one. In this example, I'm using the raw module. So back on the Ansible documentation, there's a section talking about modules. Ansible ships with a number of modules called the module library that can be executed directly on remote hosts or through playbooks. You can also write your own modules. These modules can control system resources, services, packages, files, or anything really, or execute system commands. So under introduction, we told that modules also referred to as task plugins or library plugins are the ones that do the actual work in Ansible. They are what gets executed in each playbook task. You can also run a single one using the Ansible command, and that's what we're gonna do here. So as an example, we could use Ansible and run Ansible against the web service using the service module and some arguments. You often see these kind of examples in documentation, but they are relevant more to servers than to networking devices. So you'll see stuff like this, but we wanna use network modules. So let's go to the module index 
and look at all modules in this case, and I'm gonna search for raw. And we told that raw executes a low down and dirty SSH command. So low down, dirty SSH commands are executed with raw. Once again, executes a low down and dirty SSH command not going through the module subsystem. This is useful and should only be done in two cases. The first case is installing simple JSON, and another case is when speaking to any devices such as routers that do not have any Python installed. The network devices that I'm using in this lab don't have Python installed. So on switch one as an example, if I type Python, that command is not recognized. I can't run Python on the switch. So that is a good case to use the raw command. When using Ansible with servers, you may want to use the shell or command modules, which are more appropriate. The reason why is Ansible actually in the background does something with Python on the servers and then removes the code from the servers. So often if you just try and follow example code online, it's not gonna work with a network device because Python is not running on that network device. Arguments given to raw are run directly through the configured remote shell. Standard output, error output, and return codes are returned when available. So we have some examples here, but once again, these are very much server orientated rather than network orientated. So let's use raw on our network devices. I'll be back.